everyone. It's Birdie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. Hey, I have a little different setup today, so I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work, but I have two TV trays with a garden trellis across the top, and my phone is looking down through the garden trellis. I have an idea. I saw this in a magazine, and I wanna make it, so I thought, let's do it together. Um, I don't even know what magazine, Somerset Studios, 2017. I saw this banner, okay? It's called a tag banner. Now, I wanna show you what it looks like first before we get started so you're not completely lost. But I thought, what a cute idea to make these tag banners. Now, it's funny because you know when you look at something in a magazine and then you try to duplicate it, how it turns into your own and it, and it becomes completely different. So I wanted to show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna use what I have and let's make one, okay? So the first thing is there's actually two pieces here and I didn't realize that because I went in here to see what exactly is the dimensions of a manila tag. It says that they're four and three quarters by two. I did not like that size. So see, I'm already changing it up. I'm making it my own. I don't have manila tags. So I took some index cards and I was too lazy to cut the width down. So I just cut the length down to three inches instead of two. So these are actually three by five, okay? And when we get done putting our underpants on them, after we're done decorating it, then I will cut the notches out and poke the hole in it. So I wanted to be able to do those first. Now, that's what this center is, is the tag. And then there's a little bit larger piece on the outside, which I would, I thought we'd make out of our cereal box and then you glue the tag inside of it. So I'm going to put underpants on the tag and then go over it with my paint and layers. On the outside part, which is the cereal box, I'm just going to gesso it and stencil it. Okay? No underpants. We're going commando on that part. So, not sure what we're going to do with the back yet. They put a ticket on the back. Not sure what I'm going to do with the back. I had the cutest idea. I had these, this book of old nostalgic um, movie posters, and they were small like this, and they were kind of in the colors I wanted to do. I'm going to try to make a match like this is. This is red, orange, and yellow. I have some larger bottles here that don't fit in my paint caddy. So I'm gonna try to use them up and that is blue, green, and red, okay? I'm gonna use those as my colors and I'm gonna go over it with blue, green, and red. Don't pay attention to these. I've got different inks and different colored bottles. So blue, green, and red in my inks, which are I'm wanting to get rid of because I do not like these water-soluble dilutions. Don't like them. So I wanna get rid of those, and I'm gonna sprinkle some di Distress Oxide on it in brown and blue, just to give it a lot of texture. On the outside of my gessoed, I found a stencil similar to theirs. I'm gonna use that. But then on the inside tag that I put my underpants on in the color, instead of stars, I'm gonna do this greenery because my focal images are little birdies. So I'm gonna use these little birdie images to go on my tag instead of the circus thing. Did I finish my story about the nostalgia movie poster pictures. I wanted to put those on as my focal point, but I cannot find the darn book anywhere. So 
then you move on to what do I have that would be the same theme clear across and it turned out to be birdies. Now, when I get this all finished and hung it up in my little silver camper out there, you know I will run across my little nostalgic poster book. And that's how I roll. So, let's get started. Now, what I would like to do, I may do a lot of pausing and coming back. What I would love to do is figure out my editing to fast forward, but I don't think I can. I think I can only clip, put two clips together. I don't think I can fast forward through like the gessoing part. So I'll get started gessoing, show you, pause, come back, you know the drill. So let's get her going. I have two pieces here. One's a cereal box, and the other one is a fruit snacks box. So just any kind of chipboard is what I'm using. And see how, wow, maybe I shouldn't. That was a perfect size for a big old fat journal, isn't it? Oh well, I've got plenty other boxes. My goal is to See, I was going to put underpants all over this and make it like a master board before I realized there's two different pieces of layering. I want this to be stiff. I suppose when I glue my other paper over the top, that'll stiffen it up. I could stiffen it up on the back. I could do the back as a master board color it and leave it as is for our back since we didn't know what to do with the back. So I'm not going to worry about that today. Let's just do the gessoing and get that part done. Don't know if this gesso is going to be white enough. I've got a pepper hair here I'm dealing with. Not sure that this gesso is going to be opaque enough for me, but we'll see. We may just add two layers. Do I keep gabbing or do I shut you off here? I don't really have anything to gab about. So how about I push pause and gesso this and dry it and then come back. Okay, while that's drying, let's go ahead and start putting some underpants on our tag. Now I am not going to put any colors on here because we're going to go over it with paint. So this is just for texture. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the picture looks like. You're not going to notice it. You're just going to have it on there for texture. So that's what I'm doing. Actually, I'm looking through my underpants here and I'm getting some without you know, without pictures and stuff, because I don't want to waste my picture underpants. I want to use my plain ones. Okay, let's that ought to get us started. Um, get some of this gesso out. I don't know if it matters. I'm going to use what's left in this glue first because I want to get rid of it. I don't even know. I think this is a mixture. Uh, I don't even know what all I have in here. So I just want to get rid of it. This is what I had in my art room in the winter time just because it was a smaller bottle. I actually think. I really don't know what is in here. I really don't. I, for some reason, remember putting wood glue, but this is white, so I don't think it could be Gorilla. I don't know if Gorilla wood glue is yellow. Oh, I know. I know what it is. I had some tacky glue that was really thick, and I watered it down so that I could use it. That's what it is. It's tacky glue. That's what it is. 
So I am just going to start getting some layers on here because I just want it for the texture. I'm gonna, I noticed Sylvia D has a new, uh, well, it might not be new. I'm just noticing it. It's just popping up in my feeds on YouTube for her caravan journal. So I'm anxious to watch her. I am at a block and here I'm the one that gave the prompt for around the campfire and I can't come up with anything on how to do my campfire. So I'm going to watch Sylvia's today. I've watched Christina's and then I'm going to meld the two together and see if I can't come up with an idea. I really wanted a picture of a, a campfire, but I cannot find one anywhere. So, another, you know how it is. When it's all over, I'll, I have run across all kinds of gypsy pages from when I had artist block from my gypsy page. I have run across all kinds of gypsy pictures since after I did my, after I'm done with it. Ooh, this is, this gets sticky quick. It really does. I punctured my finger yesterday with my fence, my wire cutter, so I'm trying to keep it out of the glue today. I was wanting to spray my husband's shop drive with weed killer because it gets so yucky and he could care less. He'd work around four foot weeds if if you if you let him but it bothers me so I was gonna go up and spray it and my backpack sprayer the straps broke or were rotten so brilliant person that I am found a uh, an old hose you remember those hoses that were flexy and they were like cloth on the outside and had the rubber hose on the inside El cheapo things but it was like as seen on TV thing, making them look like they're wonderful. And they didn't last no time at all. I had one of those that had busted. And uh, so I cut it up and used the cloth outside for my new straps. <coughs> and I took my crocodile out there and poked holes in the cloth hose once I got it threaded through and took some balen wire and attached it when I was cutting it with my fence cutters. I got my finger a little too close. But it worked pretty good on making new straps. The only thing is is it needs some padding, but I'll figure out something. I'll come across something to put on there. I'll just get an old wash rag or something and lay it under my, you know, on my shoulders where the hose goes over my shoulder and I'll just put a wash rag or something under there when I spray and that'll cushion me a little bit. Where there's a will, there's a way. to give us some texture. Dear, these are sticking to my background paper. I need something. I need something, guys. Let's just use this.
let's see if we can do two at a time. I was almost going to move my art room back in the house through the hot part of the summer because that darn air conditioner I had does not cool. I mean, I would come out here at 6 o'clock in the morning and turn the darn thing on and it just struggled to stay 80. So... My husband came out this morning and said, let's go to Sam's, get you an air conditioner. I was gonna go to, to Sutherland's, but theirs were more expensive. So we went to Sam's and got a larger one, window unit. So I'm back in business and it feels good in here. We'll see next week, it's supposed to be up to 100. So we'll see. Today it's in the, I think it's going to be 96, and it's keeping it about 70, 76 is what I, I have it set on 73, and it's at 76 right now. So, hey, I'm happy. Our house is 75, so it's just one degree warmer than our house. So, praise God, I was able to get get me a little window unit. The struggle is real when your art studio is outside of your house, keeping it warm and cool. I don't want it to mess up the color I'm going to put on there. My brush is getting sticky. Sticky, sticky. I don't know maybe I should you know what I'm gonna push pause because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do all of these underpants okay I'm of course you know how I am I'm grungy so I don't care if this is all the way white I don't care if pepper's hair is in it I'm going to see here if I cut this yeah I'm just gonna make these a little bigger I'm gonna measure and see how big I want these and go ahead and cut them I'm gonna make these four that'll give me a little trim all the way around so I'm gonna make it four by oh my card is six and not five so I'm gonna make it four by seven so I'm gonna cut me some of these out that are four by seven so that'll be my backdrop to these I'll be right back four by seven remember that okay my other ones are still over there drying but this will give us enough to get a couple done right now let's do our card first and remember our these are going to go on top of it so really all we need is the outside edge we just want to make sure at least the outside edge is stenciled wow that's almost like perfect. Okay, I want to try, this may not work, but I want to try inking it instead of painting it. Let's see how we do. We may have to go, we may have to get some paint. No, I think it's going to be just fine. <laughs> okay, my friend Barb, she's the one that taught me how to ink 
and she said it's so much quicker because it dries faster you're ready to work on the next layer great idea Barb great idea PS second it the second it cools down let's go camping if you're listening Is that okay there? It needs to go over a little farther. Let's do that. I'm just matching up my diamonds so it gets clear out to the edge. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm excited. Okay. Let's let's do another one so we can do two. I'm gonna go over a little farther so I get the edge this time. What are you guys doing this weekend? I know what Ricky's doing. She's trying to get her boho journals done. Be watching for Ricky Tiki Tavi if you're wanting one of her infamous boho journals because she is finishing those up. I know her Patreon gets first dibs, but then but then I think she's gonna sell them to the multitudes. So I don't know, Ricky. Did you do 50? of them. I don't remember how many she did. Eight? <laughs> Between eight and fifty, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so there's these two. Now, let's kick these out of the way and get some color on these. I want to start with, let me go get my brayer. Okay, I think I'm going to brayer my color on just to, you know, make it a little grungier. It's going to take me forever to get rid of these big bottles of paint. I have a caddy that sits on a table and it's got, it's, it looks like a big wire mesh cube and you stick all your... Uh, stick all your paints in it. Ooh, this one here feels like it's getting old. And these do not fit in the little squares, so. Okay, how do we want to do this? Do we just want to do it like this, like we would a jelly plate? Why, I think so. That's yucko. That turned out to be mud. I don't like that one. I may have to go over these with some gesso. Let's look at our picture. crazy about this, you guys. But remember our saying, 
work through the ugly. So we're just going to keep going until we work through the ugly. Drying. Okay, I've got them all done. And now I want to go over and try to work through the ugly. Let's put some gesso on it. Let me get my scraper. Because they are way too dark. So let's just see if some gesso, let's try up here on this. Okay, let's just go for it. We're just going to go for it. Every time I think, what in the dickens have I done? But Miraculously, it usually turns out okay. And it's just for me. And I have to remember in my therapy that if it doesn't work, it's just scrap paper. We can throw it away. It's okay. So, any of you that have a problem with that also, just remember, it's just scrap paper. Now, if you bought your digitals or something like that well then you may you may want to worry a little bit but if if you're just like I am and you're just truly a junk journaler then don't worry you can pitch it it's okay I'm using my pourable gesso and not my thick gesso because I don't know. That's just what I have in this jar. <laughs> I don't have any reason. There we go. Okay, now. We're going to have great painting paper. Okay, let's dry these. Okay, let's pull out our original here and see what they've got. They have got several different layers of stenciling on there, I believe. They have some white. Over, okay, let's, let's do some of our sprays first. Before we get to stenciling, Although, once we spray it, it's gonna, that stencil over it is going to smear it, but that's okay. Maybe it'll add some, some beauty if we do that. Let's do some spraying. Oh, shoot. Is it past two? Just a minute. You guys, I am just sure it is. We were going to go to the 2 o'clock matinee today and watch Sounds of Freedom. And I completely have forgotten, and I know my husband has. <sighs> well, now we'll have to go to the big theater and watch it and pay big money. It was on at our local theater. And the fire department and the police department were sponsoring it, and it was free. Can you believe that? How ding dong we are. Okay, I'm gonna dry this. Okay, we're still working through the ugly. Let's put some yellow dots. I didn't use my brown spray and I didn't use my Distress Blue because I didn't want to add more darkness. So I'm going to add some yellow dots to it. And I might do some white doodling later. 
with my white jelly roll pin. I guess I should have got my birdie pictures out to see. See how that delusions bleeds right through anything you put on there. I just don't like it. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to use the darn stuff by golly. It's kind of cool, but you know, when you don't want it to, you don't want it to. Um, I should have looked at my birdies to see what colors are in it, to see maybe what colors we need to add. I know there were robins, I think, so they ought to be blue and, and red at least. I think we need to brighten this one up a little more. Okay, see? We're pulling this bad boy together, aren't we? Can you guys see? I knew I'd need a bigger space to do this. That's why I came over here on the harvest table. My daughter is putting together an estate sale, helping some estate sale company set up for one. And she messaged me and said, Mom, there's an art table in their basement. Do you want to buy it? They only want $60 for it. It's it come out of an art room of a school and it's all wood, you know, with kind of that Formica type top on it. And it's 10 feet long. You could, it would be great in your art room. You could just sit tables around it for classes and stuff. I'm like, yeah. And it's in the bottom, uh, it's in the basement of this house. And of course, you know how estate sales are. You gotta haul that stuff out of there. I'm so tired of making my husband haul stuff everywhere for me. Every time I get a wild hair to get a new couch or anything, he's the one that has to go move it. And I'm like, no, I don't. I've got, this room is so full now. I would have to take out my harvest table to fit it in. And this harvest table was the very first thing my parents ever invested in when we moved to Kansas. It's a six foot long, solid rock maple harvest table with the benches and uh, and I don't want to ever get rid of it and I don't know where else I would put it so I said no it was hard though gosh it was hard to pass it up you know those school tables are solid as a rock so I do like the way that red is bleeding through. So we're gonna say I have a love-hate relationship with the Dilution Spray Ink. You can only use it for items that you don't mind bleeding through. Grunge items you could use it for. But if you're wanting to do something specific, you could not use it. Because if you use a paintbrush, it smears everywhere. Okay, now, let's go ahead and use up our paint on our painty paper here. Because this makes fantastic backgrounds and pages for your journals. I mean, pre-made, bam, you're done, you know? Use up your excess of everything you've got on your painty paper. Okay, now. Let's see here, what do we want to do next? Now I think we want to stencil our leaves on there. I also use my old um, tea towels for my wipe off 
And then these make wonderful journal covers when you're done. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Or you could tear it up, use it in your slow stitching. Okay, let's see how we wanna do our other stencil. Let's pull out our birdies and see, see what they're gonna look like. Because remember, we're gonna cut these, this one and this one at an angle at the top, and we're gonna poke a hole in this one so it looks like we used a tag to build it. our little birdie images. Oh, aren't they cute? Well, I'm happy just like that. Um, let's just see what we got here. Let's do one with the, let's do one with a, a leaf. I really wanted to use these leaves. Do I want dark or green or a smush of different colors? How do I want to do that? see what we got here. Okay, let's use although this this some of this is kind of turning green. Our yellow dots are kind of turning green. Okay, let's see what we got here. See, what do you do? Do you do the dark first and then go over it with the lighter ones? Is that how it works? What's the proper way to do that? I think you do the darker and then you come in over it with your lighter ones. And I think I'm going to want to it first in between my layers. Okay, so let's dry that. Okay, now let's do the next color. I don't want to get it all over. I just want to do a little bit, okay? Just can't really see that, but oh well. It doesn't really matter if I put that next color on. Let me dry this. I can see it because I'm up close to it, but if it's hanging from the ceiling, I don't think we're gonna really notice it. That looks cute, doesn't it? I'm going to go ahead and do all the leaves, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our picture. Okay, what I want to do is, I want to go ahead and cut one of these out and glue it on this part. You know me, I'm grungy, okay? I cannot emphasize that enough. I do not have time to measure. I do not care to measure. I 
I just like to play. So, you do you, like Janet Nash says. If you want to measure, measure. If you want to take time and, and figure all that out, that is fine. If you don't like to be grungy and you want everything to be straight and even and pretty and color coordinated, then do that. If you are the artist, this is your choice. This is one area where nobody can tell you what to do. Nobody at work can tell you how to do it. Nobody can tell you that it needs to be perfect. Nobody can tell you. This is a time of freedom. This is a time for us to cut loose and do what we want with no boundaries and no rules. I'm going to get my brown because my birdies have brown in it. I've got on the wrong side. My, some of my birdies have brown in it, so I want to go around that with brown ink. Okay, look at this. You can see the ink in my jelly roll clear up here. I've got all this ink, but it does not work. Is there a secret to getting these things rejuvenated again? Does anybody know? Let me know. I'm going to see if I can find another one. Uh, first of all, I want to let's cut our hole for this tag. Now, these have, how do they have the paper strung? This hole's just for looks. And then they have a smaller hole on either side to run their string through. They run their string through before they glue it on to that paper. So. I don't have a smaller hole punch, so uh, let's see what size string we have first. That'll tell us what size hole we're going to need. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is probably going to be like a four hour video. I have some pink twine. Who knows where it came from? State sale clean out or stuff somebody was throwing away. But I thought it's got color and it's not just white. So let's use that. Okay. This may have to be two parts. How do we do these? How do you find the end of these? There we go. All right, so let's try our little hole on our crocodile. And I'm going to go about halfway in between that. Approximately. It's hard to gauge. No idea how to do that straight. Okay, so then we want to. I don't even know if this ink would show up. Let's see. Very, ever, very so slightly, but maybe it makes a difference when you're hanging it up in your little camper. Maybe you'll see that little difference. Okay, I also wanted to see if I had some silver or gold in here. Here's a, is this white? I don't even know if any of these work. I was just gonna, you know, put some details on these. These were given to me by a friend who said she thought, <laughs> I think these are dried out, but you can have them. Okay. So I get what every teeny little bit I can out of them. And then when I just don't see that I can get any more, I go ahead and pitch them. There we 
go. I don't know if I'm wasting my time. I probably should have put my focal on there first to see where. where I needed the highlights. That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Okay. It's pretty on our painty paper though, isn't it? Okay, anyway. I wanted a gold to go around and make it look like I have a reinforcer circle on there. You know how a real tag has that little circle around it? That way, we'll pretend like this is a real tag. Okay, now, let's see if we can get, how did that go through? It went through from the front to the back. Like this. Okay. This is gonna be kind of weird. I'm not gonna glue it at the top yet until I get them all done and then that way I'll I'm gonna glue it like from here down that way I'll know I need to pull it which way or the other to make to get them all to fit on here let's go ahead and ink this I'm trying to hurry you guys normally I'm not this spastic but I just don't want to make this a huge huge long video and it's gonna be if if I would have pre funk it I would have made it two videos, but I'm not good at pre-thunking. Okay, let's see what this looks like. glue. Let me go get my, oh you guys, this not working at my area is crazy. Okay, I just glanced at the thermometer while I was over there. This room is officially 75 right now and it has never been 75 in the history of being a garage, except for in the winter. Okay, let's glue this on. Remember, I only glued from here down. I'll glue this later. Let's get a birdie. Not sure if I should take the time to ink around all these. My ink really isn't juicy enough, although I think I'm going to because you probably can't see that, but I can. I don't know, things just look so raw when they're not inked to a grungy girl. They're pretty. They're pretty when other people do it. But in your grungy little mind, you just can't. I can't explain it. All right, what do you think about that? Let's see, it should be like this. Okay, oh, I've got a vomiting glue bottle. Let's see if we can get that spread out. Okay, you guys, listen. I'm going to go through and do all of these and bring you back for the final banner reveal, okay? Okay, here we are, final product of our hanging tag banner.
let me tell you, you cannot sell these in your Etsy shop. You'd have to ask a thousand dollars for all the labor that goes into these tags. You have drying and collaging and painting and markering. This took me, well, it's probably five o'clock right now and I've been at this since about 1030 this morning. So, yes. No, I'm gonna have to say noon. I collage the back, just simple collage. Let me, here, let me flip it over so you can see it better. Just simple collage on the back is all I did. Just so that it wasn't dead space. But I had to go through and do each one of those and let them dry. It's just very labor intensive. But I love it. I'm going to hang it in my camper. And there you have it.